Mine was a band uh, that I was that I started um, that featured a very very famous guitar player named Neil Sean from Journey, the rock group Journey. Faithfully. Okay. So don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm a singer. I sing. That's what I do. I don't talk. I sing. So uh, I get this call. Hey, welcome everybody. Come on in. Did you leave your five dollars at the door? Oh, no. So. Uh, June was a big Hardline fan, and he, he called me, and do I have to do the June accent? Hello. No. Okay, I don't have to do it, okay. I tease him all the time, because I, I tell him words that they just can't say in Japanese. I mean, they can't, you know, with the accent, he can't, he has a hard time with crush 40, because it's clush. We're not gonna make fun of June. He's not here to defend himself. Okay, so June calls me, he says, I have, um, I'm working with this company called Sega. You heard of Sega? Of course. Yeah! Oh, good, okay. No, cool. I haven't. Yeah, I just learned about it just like last week. <laughs> no. And so he said, um, I want you to sing on some games. And I said, like, Monopoly? <laughs> what are you, the hell are you talking about? He said, no, no, no. He said, we make video games and we want to incorporate some, you know, some heavy rock and roll in the um, songs. <coughs> that hurt. <laughs> no, it didn't. So uh, I said, okay, June will, will, you know, let me check this out. I had no idea how massive this was, you guys. You're all crazy. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing. Hell yeah. See? So, I, 19, I can't believe we're going on 20 years of Crush 40. Pure insanity. That calls for an effect, an effect. I had to do that. So, uh, as you can tell, I have a lot of fun, so I enjoyed the whole gaming industry. It's about that. It's about escaping and getting inside a game and enjoying it and listening to the damn music in it because I wrote it. <laughs> so a lot of people have questions about, you know, how it started. That's exactly how it started. It was a trial for me. And then, because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the games. I don't play the games, you guys. If you ask me a damn question about the game, I'm not gonna answer it. Because the Eggman and the Shadow and this that, it's a blur. Ah. Except I do know that Sonic 06 sucks, right? <laughs> All right, we'll fix that. <laughs> Caddy's gonna fix that. So, okay, right, he's the Sonic guy. Yeah, we're gonna solder it and fix it. Uh, okay, so so here we are, um, and and we we do this whole. What's what's some of the first music I've done? Anyone know? Sons of Angel. Exactly the whole NASCAR thing, which I didn't quite understand. Thrill of the field, you know. But I sang it, and I, it was cool. And at the time, we were called Sons of Angels. But there was a real rock group called Sons of Angels, and they let us know that we could be Sons of Angels. And Sons of Angels was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk about live and learn, we're gonna talk about all this stuff. But, um, so, the corporate, there it is. The, the corporate, uh, the corporate, yes. Okay, you're upstaging me now. I'm just kidding, it's awesome. So, um, the, the whole corporate, world, they're designing this game, right? They're architecting everything, and I've got the coolest stuff. I wish I could find, you know, when I, next time I go back to LA, because I don't live there anymore, I live on the East Coast now, I live in Connecticut, and um, because the helicopter ran out of gas, and so I had to move. No, but uh, yeah, so I moved to the East Coast, and um, why am I telling you that? Because, um, I don't know why I'm telling you that, no, I'm kidding. So anyway, the, the whole how corporate works is uh, they, they architect this game, and then in LA in a locker, I've got the coolest drawings. So they would literally draw out each scene. 
that's what I would get. Just so you guys know, because you might have this vision of they build the whole game, they hand it off to Crush 40, and we look at it like we're in Paramount Theater, and we're like, do 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 No. We look at a piece of paper that has these pencil drawings, and each scene is sketched out, and then it's in Japanese, a lot of good that does me. And then there's some English to kind of, you know, kind of, you know, just give a quick synopsis of the, the whole uh, scene. So it'll say like, evil Eggman kicks this one's ass, you know, whatever. <laughs> these little things. And I have to take that, and June as well, because June even, you know, even working for Sega doesn't have full view of the entire architecture of the game. So, I don't want this to get too technical, I'm just telling you guys how it works, and then we'll have fun. Um, and so, we just kind of look through this thing, and then we have to sort of envision what the scene is going to look like completed. Do you understand? This requires effects. Do you understand <laughs> how difficult that is? It's really hard. But anyway, so, I don't think we've failed it yet, but... June would take that storyboard and he would get a musical feeling because music is, I mean, what does music do to us? It really moves us. It makes us feel a certain way. It can make us happy, it can make us pissed, make us aggressive, can make us feel however we want to feel. And we can interpret the lyrics however we want and, and use that however we want for our, our own life. But, um, so June would take the storyboard, he'd read it. Are you filming me also? Tell me the truth. Okay, nice. And, uh, that's okay. And uh, he would write a piece of music, and he would send that music to me. Most of the time, I would have to, actually, I should say, 10 out of the 20 years, I didn't see June at all in the studio. First 10, it was kind of old school. We'd get together, we'd chart things out, we'd work things, you know, like that. Second half of the career, send me a file and then send me a storyboard, and then we build it from there, which is kind of, it's fun. I gotta be honest with you, it's really cool. It's the most creative you can possibly be. It's sort of helpful, different, I have probably, guys, 60 albums out worldwide with all the bands and projects I do. And writing gaming music, I have to tell you, is the most rewarding because you have a little help. You, you have, the vision of what you want to write about in front of you, then it's just up to you to bring it to 100%. So, um, June would provide a piece of music, and then I would provide, you know, the lyrics and melody. Okay, and who played, you played me my, you got that thing? Sonic Heroes demo. Sonic Heroes demo. Has anyone heard this thing? I heard it for the first time today. I remember doing it when I heard it. So the first thing we do is we scat. Do you know what scatting is? Yeah, singer for singers. I'm saying absolutely freaking nothing. But I'm getting the, the feel of the song down and you know the melody ideas down. And that's what you, I can't believe they put that out there. But that's pretty cool. So... That's the stage one of writing, is it's all about a feeling, right? It's melody, it's about a feeling, and then lyrics come in. What do I need to accomplish lyrically in this? What's the scene about? What do I want to say? What, you know, stuff like that. I've only had, I'm proud to say, as a rock and roll guy, gotta do the ones, I've only had a couple of lyrics rejected because of my language. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> but uh, all in all, it's been, every single piece of music that we've written has been approved. Never had anything not approved. Yeah, not your language, your language. <laughs> You're up, uh, yeah. Would never fly. You'd be done. Two seconds, Caddy. Yes. Soap. Okay, so. Uh, that's, that's the basics of how we've worked for the past 20 years. And I will honestly say that June is like a brother, and a uh, Japanese brother, and uh, we, we just click. You know, sometimes partnerships that you make in your life and business relationships you make, that just work. 
and we don't have we have a catalog of songs if you guys knew what we had sitting in our files you would lose your mind we're just waiting for the next new game <laughs> right so um corporate's there doing their thing and we just keep writing songs so anyway so this is an open forum to ask me anything you want about the process about myself um, you guys already know I have a small family, I have two kids. How you doing? Come on in. Can you bring food? I'm hungry. French fries. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, nice to see you. Uh, so, yeah, I have two kids, a lovely wife, uh, you know, the, the horse and the dog and the cat. I don't have a horse. I think anything that goes to the bathroom larger than you should not be a pet. Right? Stop so, laughing. So Just kidding. Uh, anyway, um, questions, you guys. Let's just start, because I, I didn't realize we didn't have so much. Oh, okay. So we'll just kind of go from the front here. I just have a quick question. Like, uh, you can have a long question. Doesn't have to be quick. It's not too busy. Okay. Like, uh, for, say, Sonic Adventure 2. Yes. I can re I'm old, but I'm not that damn old. I can still remember. Uh, he talks to me like I had dementia. <laughs> Who am I? Okay, I'm good. No, no, so, your question, sorry. It just so happens that, like, Tony Harnell and Shortino, I know all those guys. Because remember, well, maybe you don't know. So, I started playing professionally at 11 years old, literally. So, I got some funny stories. You want stories? Yeah. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about my coming up in music and my going through school, which was not a lovely experience. And I don't recommend anyone not being academically schooled. This is just my personal situation. So, I started, I picked up a guitar, I was eight years old, and I was playing like Stairway to Heaven and figuring out, wow, that's a pretty cool chord, and that's it. So I knew, literally, guys, at eight years old, I want to be a professional musician at eight. So my friends playing with Tonka toys, riding their bikes, digging holes, eating worms, whatever they were doing outside, I was inside working and, and playing and, and growing my craft. At 11, I went professional. Professional means you're now being paid to perform. That's really the true definition of being a professional whatever. The second you're paid, you're professional. It doesn't mean you're good, it just means you're professional. <laughs> so, I still suck, but I just made a hundred bucks. So, um, anyway, so going through school was difficult for me because, you leave it me? No, no, you have to give it Okay, hand. go ahead, you do your thing and come right back. Do you want us to wait for you? No, I'm good. Okay, good, thanks. So, going through school was tough for me because I had one thing and one thing on my mind. Girls. No. Uh, I, I had that too. No, music. Music. That's it. I appreciated what our, what our past fathers have done for us and, you know, the, our historians. I appreciated everything. I didn't want to know about it. So I went from class to class. I did what I had to do. I had to get my passing grade and I moved on. So, I'm now in high school, probably nine, uh, tenth grade, okay? And uh, I'm in the newspaper a lot, because when you're in a small town, you're, you're, people are like, oh, he's like a big star guy, whatever. I, didn't, I, don't, I never got caught up in all this. I'm no different than you guys. I just sing. So, I, uh, why are you laughing? I'm no different than you. He's like, yes, you are, you, you rock. You rock, man. Okay, so, um, you know, a lot of the teachers and the principals in the school, they, they recognize that this is what I'm doing. And it was tough for me, because I was called to the principal's office a lot. I was not in school a lot, and I don't recommend that, but Fridays I was playing. I was playing the East Coast, or I was on the West Coast. Mondays I was too exhausted to go to school, because I was playing Friday and Saturday, and, okay. So, uh, ooh, security. We all right? All right. Uh, so one day, okay, I gotta move on to the story. So one day the principal calls me, redemption is beautiful, remember I said that. 
One day, the principal calls me down to the office and he says, Johnny, I know what you're doing. We know that you have a career in mind, and but you need your education. And I said, sir, I completely agree with you, but with all due respect, um, I was, I was not, this was not a smart comment. I said, with all due respect, I make more money in one day than you do in two weeks. Yeah. That didn't, shots, shots, shots fired. That went over like a fart in church. Uh, yeah, not good. So, um, he laughed. It was kind of cool. He laughed and said, listen, how many sinus infections and stomach aches can one kid get? Because every excuse, why weren't you in school? Like, mom, just tell him I had a stomach ache. No, okay, not a stomach ache. Ate too much pasta, meatballs must have been bad, whatever, Johnny's got a stomach, I'm sorry, he'll be there tomorrow. That was it for me. So he said, look, we know what you're doing and we know you're working, just tell us the truth. Remember that. So, that next week, Paul Stanley from KISS calls my house and says, Johnny, I heard your music and I'm getting into producing and I'd like to hear some more of your stuff. And I'm like, Mom, I'm staying the hell home this week and I'm making more stuff. So in the studio I went and I, and I created a whole bunch of new songs and things that I was trying to finish and I neglected school for that week. I had very supportive parents, I'll explain that in a little bit. Anyway, long story short, the following week I sent off the tape, nothing really happened, but I did get to meet them and it was cool and then later we all became friends and whatever. So, uh, the following week my mom said, Johnny, what do you want to put on the excuse? So remember, remember that comment about the, yeah, the more money in one day than two weeks. Okay, so I said, Mom, tell them the truth. So she wrote, Paul Stanley from KISS, Paul House, <laughs> my poor mom. Okay, so like first period and a half, Johnny to the principal's office, Johnny to the principal's office, please. And I'm like, here we go. So it was at that point where uh, this particular gentleman actually shoved me a little bit, which doesn't go over with an Italian guy, Sicilian. You know, we got a temper <laughs> like this. And he screamed and yelled at me. And I said, no, no problem, sir. I understand. And I said, and someday you will understand also. So actually that was 11th grade. On my, my senior year, my, I told my parents, short of murder from my father, uh, we calmed him down, and I said, don't worry, they just don't understand, you know? Um, so my senior year, my mother woke me up, time to go to school, and I said, no, not going. And she covered me and said, go back to sleep. So I had a very different life. I had a very, my parents understood exactly what I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted to do, and I focused on it 100%. The moral of the story, do what drives you, and do it 100%, okay? And do what makes you happy. It's not about the money. I can tell you guys the things, the helicopters, the planes, they're cool as hell, but you don't need them, all right? You need health, you need love, you need happiness, you need to wake up and feel fulfilled doing whatever you do, okay? That's just my, my, my that was my nice speech, okay? So, um, Later in that year, okay, let's see, actually, then I went off to California, I was 18, I said goodbye to everybody, I jumped in this tour bus, this beat that was Jimmy Buffett, you know this guy, Jimmy Buffett? It was his old tour bus, it smelled like hell. And we redid it, and it was like 14 guys in a bus, you could imagine what that bathroom looked like after a shower, oh, bad. And we were so poor that there was like a nectarine tree, and we picked these nectarines in California, and I swear to God, if you ate my nectarine, I was going to beat you because that was my damn nectarine. We were that poor. And the old cliche, starving artist, believe every word of it. That is not just a phony cliche. It's very difficult business to, to, to you know, get to a certain level of where you can eat. Um, so, I'm told you, the story's going to come full circle. 
I landed at a very young age. I was probably 20, 21 when I signed the deal, like an eight and a half million dollar record deal. That was quite amazing for me. And I ran into that same um, principal at a, it was called a Heckinger, it was like um, Home Depot. Okay, you know Home Depot? It was like a Home Depot. And I went and I got my GED, you know, I wanted to finish my high school just to be finished. And I ran into this guy, and you'll never believe what happened. He came running up to me, congratulating me. Redemption. Redemption. <laughs> and he wanted to exchange my GED with a high school diploma from, I'm not going to say the name in high school. And are there children in here? Okay, you're a child, yes. Uh, then I'll keep it clean. Uh, no, so I, I, ki I kindly said, uh, sir, thank you very much, but no thank you. So at that time, he wanted the press. You know, like, oh wow, Johnny, you know, you know big guy now, eight and a half million dollars, and then this and that, anyway. It's a crazy business, it's a stupid story. Let's do it, tell another one, no. So, um, yeah, so that, that was my, my upbringing, and then once I started this hardline group, the career just went from there, and then again, 1998, going forward, doing this gaming music. I love you guys, and here's why. Because you love this gaming stuff, like wholehearted. Do you know what I mean? I have fans that come and go. They listen to a Hardline album or an Axel Rudy Pell. I saw an Axel Rudy Pell record in here, CD, yeah. And fans come and go. But gamers stay forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Forever, forever. <laughs> and that's the coolest thing. And something happened to me yesterday. It was like a revelation. And seriously. So I get picked up at the airport and I meet this guy named Caddy. You guys know Caddy. Yeah. Right? And I didn't know who the hell he was. I thought he was a golf caddy. I was like, I'm not golfing, bro. He's like, no, no, I'm caddy. Hello. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not golfing this week. I'm doing a convention. I am too, you bloody bastard. Don't you know who I am? I've got 8 billion 745 subscribes. And uh, yeah, I'm bullshitting a little bit, but yes. No, okay, yeah, that, some of that was bullshit. But, uh, but he did say, what's up, man? But uh, he, he did say this, and it was eye-opening. And he goes, dude, I, I just have to tell you, um, I'm like a huge fan, and songs like Live and Learn are iconic. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 I just wanted to hear that. <laughs> No, no, no. And I said, right? I said, are you serious, man? He goes, no, you have no idea. He goes, I grew up on this shit. Yeah, This was my life. Was. Yeah. What do you mean, was? Did you listen to the song today? You better listen to it tonight, brother. Song number seven. Three minutes, 54 seconds. I've sang that song 1,743 times. I swear to you guys, and I even called my wife, I said, I missed something in 20 years, and I'm sorry about it. I missed how powerful this music actually is for those who grew up with it, and I'm sorry. I'll admit it, I'm sorry, I missed that. And I didn't realize, you know, when you have a lot of fans come up to you and say, oh man, that song had changed my life, it was awesome, you're like, you're appreciative. Because seriously, and I say this like a broken scratch CD, without you guys, I am nothing but a voice, just like, it's just out there. You guys make it happen, not me. If you don't love it, it's useless to me, right? So my approach to writing a song, I write it for me, honestly, and then I hope you guys love it. Do you love it? Yeah! Okay. I was nervous about that question. Um, so yeah, I didn't realize, it wasn't until Caddy said it, I didn't realize the impact that this 
music, um, you know, has and can have on people and how it's with you. You know, it's like if someone gives you a smack, you're going to remember this damn smack, right? So I hope that this music and everything that Jude and I have done together in Crush 40 has left a positive, good feeling and good memories for you guys. I really do. That was the quest. That was the quest. So a couple of questions before I go on a tangent on another stupid story. Yes, sir. Okay, so out of all the songs, basically, which is like my favorites, right? Oh, the covered ones? Oh, shoot. I never thought about that, bro. I don't. Hmm, Fire Woman. Yeah. Good. Yeah, me too. Okay, done. Fire Woman. Sold. What he said. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. I didn't think that Live and Learn was good. Honestly, you know, I knew which damn game it was on. Adventure something, three or four. Is there a three? Uh, we're gonna make a damn three. slightly tilted creative person, you should always be weary of whether your work is good. So for an artist, for a musician, and I'm sure we have musicians in here, it's never quite finished. There's always something you can change. So when I listen to Live and Learn, I go, shit, why didn't I add a harmony line? This would have been, Live and I mean, I, I hear things and I can't sleep at night and that's why I'm tired. <laughs> but no, seriously, it's, it's like unfinished work. And I remember calling June and saying, June, is it good? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I go, no, seriously, he goes, yeah. And the rest is history with, we have way more hits than Caddy does. Oh. I'm kidding, bro. I'm kidding. I love him. He's gonna beat the hell out of me on this next video. I know it. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> just kidding. I think you said it though. He said, like, combined, you got like a billion views of something. I don't know. All right, ten billion. Got it. Uh, no, he goes. No, you know, you bloody bastard. Um, so, um, who likes fish and chips? Okay, good. I was just curious. Because I didn't want him to feel left out. You feel at home? Cup of tea for you or something? Uh, Charlie, all right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Caddy, all the way from the UK. I have no idea what the hell a YouTuber is. I thought he goes on the lake with a tube. Down. <laughs> Down the rapids. I'm learning. Okay. It's close, pretty much. Yes, sir. Yes, you. Wait, wait, say that again. Some some bands have the can someone translate for me because I'm like a rock and all over your ears over here. Yes. Yes. I don't care. <laughs> it's a sign of flattery when someone reproduces your song. I knew that I became a rock star when I went to a strip club and they were playing my song and dancing to it. <laughs> wow, wow. The only problem was it was a square pole. It hurt very bad. Very bad. I should have never slid down it. Okay, anyway, back there. Yes, ma'am. Is this going to be a serious question? No. Okay, because you looked very serious. Okay, go ahead. One of those days is one of my favorite songs from you, but what inspired you to write that song? Oh, that's simple. Haven't you ha ever had one of those days? Thank you, that's the end. Right? 
That's it. Don't think too deep. We might be creative, but we're a little stupid too. I just, not you, me. It was, it's simple, yes. Another one? Okay, last one. Just kidding. You had said some of your lyrics have been unapproved from Sega. Yes, sir. Do you remember what any of those were? Fuck no. Sorry, kids, children, don't use that language. That was a joke. Uh, I don't remember, but some of it, you know, because look, some of these, the action in the game, you get a, can get a little aggressive. And so they just wanted to keep it tame. But I don't remember the specifics. I only know what happened, like, maybe nine or ten times. No, like once or twice, where June says, oh, no, they can't say that. No, 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 no. I don't remember. No, I wish I did. Wish I did. Yes, sir. What do I do what? What are your top inspirational bands? Oh man, okay, very good question. So, I'm weird a little bit, right? So, I never had a record collection or a CD collection. Why? Because a lot of artists listen to different things and they're inspired by that, but I was kind of like my own planet. I wanted, I didn't want to be inspired by anyone. So, I never took a guitar lesson, piano, bass, drum lesson, ever. So when I sit down and play, I can't play anyone else's song. I only play me, which is kind of cool. It kind of works, right? So there's great talent everywhere. I love guys like Freddie Mercury. You know, I love, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, it's just, just amazing singers and like Frank Sinatra. People say, Frank Sinatra, really? Go, yeah, here's why. Listen to where the guy places his words. There's phrasing, there's things I hear that, again, keep me up at night. But. So, really, I don't have one particular band. Of course, I grew up with Scorpions and Van Halen and stuff like that. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, and then become friends with all those guys. It's pretty cool. Did you ever hear the Scorpions um, song, Dynamite? Dynamite! Did you ever hear that song? I was having dinner with the Scorpions in Bulgaria, of all places. And we did, I've got stories and not enough time. And we did the equivalent to like a David Letterman. Do you remember that show, like a late night, you know, yeah. show? And we're having dinner, and so like, how do you tell a guy that that you really love in the music business that you idolized him when you were little? That makes him very freaking old, right? It's like you guys, like I listened to you when I was four years old. I'm like, okay, I'm 96, going, and, but anyway, so I'm sitting with him, and, and, I, and I said, uh, Klaus, um, I just have to tell you, I was very careful that when I was learning about music, that means I was young as hell, I, I, you just really inspired me. I mean, like, I, like nonstop, you were in it. And you know what he said? He goes, Johnny, that's dynamite! And he literally sang out like that. I'm like, yes! That is the coolest thing ever! Really, so then you get to know these guys and they're, they're humans. Just one time I went to a restaurant and this kid started shaking. He was shaking like, I said, dude, what's up? Because I'm a huge fan, I'm a huge fan. I'm like, calm down, man, I'm just gonna eat a steak here. Gonna... And he was, he was flipping out. I went to the manager, I said, hey man, can, can, I, can, can I do something just a little weird? He goes, what? I said, I wanna go in the back and I wanna wash a dish. And he goes, why? I said, because I need to show this kid that I am no different than he is. And I went back there, and he came back, and he was like. <laughs> he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm washing a dish. He's like, why? I said, because I'm no better, I'm no different than you are. Thank you for loving my music, but relax. So anyway, it's cool. I got so, I got so many stories, but we don't have enough time. Questions? Yes? Question that you guys are probably going to answer. The most underrated song. Crap. Which one? What the hell was that? Did I write it? Oh, cool. Damn the man, she's setting in again. Uh, man, I don't know that I have an answer um, to that. You know, we we it was kind of weird with Crush Forty. So we love writing for the games, but we also like love being Crush 40 and not having to stick to a script, you know what I mean? So, like, um, Song of Hope and stuff like that when we had the, the you know, the, the problem in Japan and the disaster, 
You know, I love songs five minutes, I'm getting my ass booted. Okay, we're almost done, six and a half. Um, and yeah, so I, you know what? I don't know. You guys, most underrated song? Live life. Live life. Okay. Live life I wrote. It's just funny what you remember and what you don't. I wrote Live Life in a hotel room at a desk. June sent me the music and he said, Johnny, can you work on this? I said, okay, well, I have a little time. Let me see. And I sat at a desk and I, God bless you. And I, you welcome. And I literally <laughs> came all the way over here that spray. I was and I wrote that at a desk. Another song, um, I'm trying to think of if it was, I think it was what I'm, what I'm made of. So guys, I've lived most of my life in a metal tube called a tour bus. And when we would tour, I would tour for a year and a half straight. I would come home Christmas Eve, because I'm a good Catholic boy, and the Christmas tree would be up. We'd celebrate Christmas, and on Boxing Day, which day is that, mate? I said, probably 26, mate. You call it Boxing Day, don't you? Right. That we don't have bo Boxing Day for us, and I can go in the freaking ring and whoop some ass. That's Boxing Day. No, it's the 26th for us, right? Okay, so on the 26th, that tour bus would come in front of my house. I'd kiss my now wife, who was a girlfriend back then. Goodbye. That was it. We lived in a bus. We toured. So, what I'm made of. My kids decide, Daddy, I want to see the United States. I said, kids, I've seen it 749 times. I'm not interested. And I said, okay, kids, they want to go to campground, so what does Johnny do? I go and buy a tour bus. Okay, three minutes, I know. I buy a stupid tour bus like an idiot, and we pack the family in there and the dogs and food and stuff, and off we go. And I get a call from June. Johnny, we have to make a song quickly. <laughs> I pull off into a campground. I said, kids, go swimming. Daddy's going to write a song. And I literally wrote what I'm made of at my little dinette kitchen thing in the bus, cranking up the music in the, uh, June's music and working lyrically and sketching it all out. And you thought it was glamorous. <laughs> you pictured the big studios and the hello, what are you doing, sir? The air control doors. He was in my camper. Anyway, a couple more questions. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I have a follower who's wondering, are there any future Crush 40 albums coming in the pipeline? Do you have any indication? I can give some indication, and the, and the short answer is absolutely. So, again, there's the games, which we love to do, and there's Crush 40. So we're planning on some shows in Japan, not the U.S., sorry, not yet. And anything that comes our way, by way of games, we're always ready um, to, to make the music strike. So I hope that answers you. Yeah, short answer, absolutely. A couple more? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll get you next. Have you He's ever been like, me, asshole, me, me, <laughs> me. Uh, Painted his nails and everything, just like flickering. Okay, you're next. Uh, have you ever done a cover of Escape from the City? If not, would you? Uh, have I? Uh, no, I have not. Would I? I sh I'll cover anything. Anything? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I think it's a great idea, as a matter of fact. Okay, I gotta go, I gotta go work on that. <laughs> yes, sir. So advice for someone to become a musician. Ooh, okay, so first of all, you have to be passionate about the instrument, right? And you, you guys, the, the younger part of the audience have such, well, everyone in this room now, has such an advantage that I didn't have. Man, if I had this freaking thing called the internet, I'd be, that thing would, I'd be walking funny because the computer would be like stuck. You can learn so much, right? So pick your instrument, be passionate about it, and learn. Learn as much as you can. I was really lucky. When I had Neil Sean from Journey in my group, my knowledge, like my chord knowledge, went up like 50 times. Work with people who are better than you. That's how you grow. Don't be intimidated.
to try. Get up there and do it, you know what I mean? But learn and be humble. I'm a very humble guy, can you tell? No, I am. And I, I, will, I will have to stop this, right? But I wanna say one thing, honestly. Very, very important. Two very, very important words that I must say to you guys. Thank you. I am sincere, sincere to the core, to the core. And every day I wake up, I am grateful for everyone, people like you guys, who support the music, support the games, support happiness. Thank you guys. Enjoy the show. Hey, it's 7 o'clock tonight. We're doing some singing. Let me show you just what I'm made of. Simple curiosity. Let me show you what I'm made of now. You can take Take the bitch out, go. Take the bitch out, get it, take the bitch out.